Hello, everybody. So I will be speaking about uh, AI-driven game characters that are coming to, to games in next years. And, but first, uh, something about me, like why I'm interested in AI uh, since my childhood. Basically, I realized that the only thing or one of the things that is limiting uh, the progress of the civilization is the amount and cost of intelligence. Basically, we are bound to 8 billion people. And if you actually want to accelerate the civilization, we need to have artificial intelligence and, and scale it up much more. And something about me or my history. So uh, 13 years ago, I started my game studio called Kin Software House. Then we developed a game, Space Engineers. Maybe some of you know it. Uh, it has sold 5 million copies, and it's still very active on the market. And uh, then I founded Good AI. And uh, in Good AI, we started to, uh, to work on uh, um, research on uh, human-level AI. And in the last two years, we actually migrated and we are focusing on using large language models in some applications. And one of them is AI game that I will be uh, talking about. So it's a game with uh, agents or NPCs uh, that are driven by language models like ChatGPT. And basically, ChatGPT determines what the agent should do. So the agents, they can observe in the environment. They have their personalities. They have their long-term memories. They can learn new things. They can interact with each other. And so on. And in this example, what you see is that the player just said to the woman that her husband, uh, that he saw the husband cheating. And she gets angry. And what is happening uh, in, the, in the background is basically that the language model is emulating how she would react in that situation. So she decides to confront him. They start talking. He starts to explain, you know, either it was a mistake, it will never happen again, and so on. So they, they talk for a while. Now she's having it enough. So those two up uh, are uh, agents or NPCs. So this is how, he, uh, how she decided to solve the situation. And because there is certain, uh, certain randomness in how the language models react, uh, if you play the same scenario multiple times, there are different outcomes are possible. So in this one, for example, it's actually the husband who will ha get angry at the player because he thinks that the player is manipulating him and he will attack the player, which you will see. And it's not scripted. So basically, this is all just the language model uh, emulating the characters. So something about this game or about this compact is that uh, these are embodied agents. So they are embodied in some environment. They can observe and act in the environment. Uh, we think about, li about them like living beings capable of learning. Uh, they have their own goals. They make their own decisions. They are autonomous, goal-oriented. Uh, they are LLM large language model driven. So uh, what is important is that this is not only about conversations or dialogue with the agents. This is also about uh, agents having behaviors in the game world. They have long-term memories, which means that they can learn things. Uh, they are self-aware. They can interact. They have emotions. And on top of this, we are also building something that we call AI director. So another AI that actually tells them what to do to create some interesting story. Here is another uh, video demonstration. So on the right side is player, on the left side is a Zeus, the god. And I think everybody knows him in, in Cyprus. So uh, the, uh, Zeus, he asked the player for some help, but player will say like he will not do it because Zeus is a, is a loser. And now you will also see uh, Zeus' uh, uh, decisions. So again, it's a language model emulating this specific personality. So how looks the technology? It actually doesn't look that complex. So in the middle is the language model. That's the blue one. Uh, the green one are the inputs to the language model. Like we, we, we know it as prompts. So it's observations, memories from the long-term memory, some special prompting that we need to do, and characters, personality, or bio. 
All this is, is inserted into the prompt, into the language model. We get some response. Then we need to post-process the response. And then basically we send it to the game engine and uh, the game makes some actions. Here is more technical explanation how it actually shows how there are some kind of plannings, self-criticizing, because the agents can also think about their own thoughts, they can think about their own actions, criticize it, learn from it, and so on. This is how it looks the prompt, or this is one example of the prompt. The, the red one is the, the, the constant part of the prompt, orange is uh, what we add there dynamically, and the green one is then what the language model predicts, and this is what we then use and make the actions in the game world. Here is another example where the agent asks for, for a goal and the player helps him. The goal is to pick up the med kit in the, in the middle of the fence. But the item is unreachable, so he can't get there. So then the agent, using language model, actually start reasoning how to, how to get there, like what the agent, uh, what he can do to basically solve this problem and get to the med kit. So he realized that he just cannot get there. And on the, on the right side, you can see his uh, inner monologue, so his own thoughts happening. Now, soon he will realize that he can use either an axe or hammer or a torch to destroy the fence and get inside and get the med kit. And again, I want to repeat that this is not scripted. It's really the language model deciding what this person should be doing. And we can also see thoughts of the agent. So basically, what's happening in his brain? What is he thinking? What is he planning? And this is it. So long-term memory, that's an idea that uh, the prompts, as you know, usually it's limited, you know, like 8,000 tokens, 4,000 tokens, and so on. And if you want to have expanding, dynamic, infinite uh, stream of memories for the agent, you need something like the long-term memory, which helps you to store memories. For example, what the agent saw, what the agent said, what was said to him, uh, what was the result of some action, and so on. Just like we have the long-term memory, these agents also have the long-term memory. This is another example that shows the benefit of the long-term memory. So basically, uh, right now, uh, these agents are talking, and they are talking about some, some food, uh, cake or something. And uh, so basically, we would expect that the agent should learn what the, other, what the other player or other agent told him. So basically, uh, they talk about that his favorite snack is chocolate, brownie, or cake. And now here is a follow-up conversation, how it would look without long-term memory. So if they just, you know, didn't have this information, this memory. And he just cannot remember what they were talking about. And now with long-term memory. Yeah, so that they remember that they talk about the, the chocolate. Uh, there are also some challenges with this technology. Uh, language models, they are unreliable. They give very volatile or different outputs, even if you change some very small, almost irrelevant part of the prompt. They also tend to hallucinate, as you know, that they made up stuff sometimes. Also, when they are tra trained with RLHF, uh, which is reinforcement learning from human feedback, they seem to be too nice. And for a game like this one, we actually want some drama. You know, we, we need bad personalities. Uh, the context windows is too limited, so we need long-term memory. It's also slow. You know, the, the speed of response is quite slow. They are not multimodal, which means that they understand only text. They don't understand images. They don't understand 3D environment and they don't improve by experience. And there are also challenges for game design. So for example, it's traditional in games that uh, writers, they write the stories, the dialogue lines for the characters. We cannot do this in this game because everything is dynamically generated. So also the voice needs to be automatically generated. And we basically cannot control or expect what situation will, situations will emerge in the game. Another big disadvantage is the cost, because language models are quite expensive right now, especially for this use case. And just to give you some example, 
uh, the cost for uh, 1 million tokens, text tokens, uh, in OpenAI cost $2, and our game generates 2.5 million tokens. So this would mean basically a few dollars uh, per one hour of player playing the game, which is quite expensive. And the reason is that uh, when you are using ChatGPT, you write like one sentence, another sentence, but in this case, imagine that there is a prompt happening every five or 10 seconds, and usually for each agent. So it's really generating a lot of uh, calls to, to LLMs. Uh, here are some examples when it doesn't work. So for example, uh, the, the player wants a gold uh, ingot from the NPC, from Petra. And she misunderstands him. And she gives him something else. So, player tries it again. And now it really should be clear that we are asking about the gold ingot. But no, she, she throws him the same thing again. And this is actually even more funny, because this is an example where the agent is prompt to do everything we tell him. It's almost like a slave. But we want him to, to do something for us, bring the medkit. And he actually starts arguing that why we need the medkit. And we tell him, like, just stop arguing, just bring the medkit. And he's like, OK, but tell me why you need the medkit. Then we ask him that uh, you need to destroy the fence to get the medkit. And he will say, like, but I don't want to destroy somebody's property. And then you tell him, just do it. And he still, like, basically is in this loop and doesn't want to do it. And this never ends, actually. And this brings us to, to ethics in, in AI and games. What we observed when we were testing this on some people is that some of them said that they are actually don't feel comfortable killing the agents when they can speak to them. So basically, people start to attribute some kind of like human feelings to these agents. And uh, another thing is very important is that we also need large language models that don't have these filters on behaviors and actually can generate evil behaviors. Because for games, for any kind of drama, you need sick, twisted, you know, some psychopathic personalities. And it's really hard to get that behavior from language models. So maybe one day we will train something like evil GPT. Uh, these are examples where we can see how the agent is self-aware and actually thinking about his own thoughts. So this, this guy here, he has some problems. Uh, he needs advice. And he comes to the player player gives him advice, and then he happily, uh, you know, goes away. This is another example. It's a love. So the, the guy in the middle, he's in love with the girl who is on top of the screen. And he wants some help from player. And he asks about it, like, what should he do, and, you know, and so on. And the player gives him advice. And after some time, he decides, like, okay, everything is okay. And he, he goes to her and, you know, tries his luck. Uh, I also want to quickly just scroll through some related work if you're interested. For example, there is this Stanford paper, uh, Voyager uh, from NVIDIA also working on LLM agents. Uh, another one, this is AutoGPT, maybe some of you know it. It's very similar technology in principle. Something from Microsoft called ChatGPT for Robotics. Memprom, this is about how the LLMs can learn. And future in games. So for me, it's actually a good environment to be testing LLMs. I see two futures. One is these NPCs, and second is actually LLM-generated games. So just talking to an agent, and the agent is generating the whole game for you. And uh, thank you for your time. Perfect. Thank you, Marek. That was uh, quite something. And I'm super excited to see where this is going and where do you think this is going outside of the games? So what is the next steps once we fine tune and test it and implement these agents inside the games? Where would you see this going? Is it physical world, or robots, or is it the digital world, or 
what's the next step? Yeah, I think many, many of these. One of the use cases that we are also working on is to have an agent that can talk uh, through API with some robotic system. So in our case, it's actually, we have some system for controlling a swarm of drones. Then there is the agent. We teach the agent to control the API of the drones. And then we just uh, tell him that, hey, remember the position where you find the person. Return to, the, to that position where you find the person in like a red suite or something. And so the, the trick is that the uh, chatbot learns something about the other system and learns to control it. So I think all these use cases will be possible. Another very interesting uh, use case for me is, uh, or it's actually a domain uh, with this long-term memory and continual learning. Because ChatGPT has limited memory, like you know, just the conversation, so you cannot teach it from instance to instance or conversation to conversation. It always forgets. But imagine having some long-term memory that keeps track of everything you ever discussed with ChatGPT. And it's summarized, distilled in some very nice way, so it can very easily retrieve those memories based on like how we retrieve our memories. Maybe it also has access to your emails, calendar, documents, and, and everything else. And then you can just ask it, that, uh, I want to remember this email that I discussed, like this thing with somebody, but I cannot find the email, please find it. And because it would have better tools how to retrieve these memories, it would find it for you. Or you will, for example, ask it to send email to, to John, and uh, um, like answer this thing to him. And because the agent will have the context from the long-term memory, it will understand what the discussion with John was about, what is the relationship with John and so on, the answer could be very much personalized. And so to, to, to sum it up, I think the, the, the future is more personalized GPTs that are personalized through the long-term interactions that the GPT has with you. Is there any limitation to the long-term memory, memory, or is it just, it's unlimited, so the longer we use it, basically, the more information it can absorb? It's hard to say. I think some people are speculating that even human long-term memory is unlimited, but the truth is that also we forget so many things, right? So, <laughs> so maybe it's just overwriting itself. But here, it depends on the implementation. We are not that far uh, in a, with our long-term memory for me to say with confidence that, you know, after some time, the retrieval of the memory will not start losing some precision, you know. And, I mean, storing the memories, you can do forever, because it's just cost of the hard drive, and actually it's not that much data. So I think this part is easy, but the retrieval part, and that the retrieval is actually relevant, I think that's, that's the tricky part. In theory, I think it should be unlimited. That's what I believe. Or you can teach the agent, just by discussing it, how to retrieve different kinds of memories. Because even you or me, you definitely must have different methods how to retrieve some memories in your life. Like some memories, you just remember them and they are there. Some memories, you actually need to think about for a while, like what was it I was thinking about, you know, and it takes some time. And other memories, you actually need to open your notes, go through them, and then, you know, like something snaps in your brain and, and you remember it. So the same with the agents, that uh, the memory, the long-term memory, the first version that we started was based on semantic search, which is that basically you find semantically similar sentences to the current context uh, with what is in the memory. But it's just for a step. Much more complicated mechanisms for long-term memory are needed, like, for example, spreading activation, so you remember something, and it actually triggers some other memory that maybe was created at the same time, or there is some kind of other relationship between those things that maybe those memories were created at the same location or with the same people. And you need to, through spreading activation, retrieve those memories and bring them back to the context. Perfect, perfect. Uh, I don't think that we have any more time for questions from the audience, but Marek, thank you very much. Thank it you. It was super insightful. Please uh, give Marek a big applause. Thank you. Thank you.